The views on this program do not reflect those of ONTV or its board of directors. Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to OAA Now here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, one of the hosts of Last Week Brain Cells and the host of um, Between Terminators and Origin of Tojin. Like, welcome those watching on a local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube. A lot to talk about this week. Um, obviously, we're going to recap football. Um, we're going to also talk about boys' basketball preview. Of course, the girls' basketball season starts. Um, you know, we're filming on Monday here. It starts tonight, but... You know what, a lot of the league, they're playing on um, Tuesday night, which is the 29th, so they're going to kick off there. So a lot of a lot of things to talk about this week here. Um, we're going to recap a lot of them. Um, you know, when you look at football, obviously, we're going to recap those, um, especially Division One and Division II. Um, we're going to break those down. Um, obviously, a lot of people are really impressed with what um, Donovan Edwards did of um, – Formerly of West Bloomfield, now playing at Michigan. What he did against Ohio State. Um, he had two long touchdowns. Of course, it was remnant of what he did over at West Bloomfield. Um, he did. Yeah, I know he did play very similar to that against Davison, also against Belleville. Um, we're gonna talk also about Division One, Division Two, and a court. And um, we're gonna break those down. Obviously, um, my thoughts on that. Um, everything that's been going on. Um, Obviously, of course, one of the big stories around the entire state of Michigan this week has been the um, case at Belleville. Um, Jermaine Crowell, um, of course, was let go by Belleville after a um, an investigation by the MHA um, put them on more probation. Um, Crowell was suspended for the state for two years. Um, couldn't coach in the state. Um, Belleville said, "You know what? I mean, like, we got to let you go, man. You know what I mean?" And um, they did that. Um, they had an interim coach and, you know, basically used the state championship game as a interview. I mean, like process and, you know, Belleville won the state title 35, I think it was 35-17. Um, Bryce Underwood had a big day for Belleville. He had, I think he had, he had a nice day. He had a big day for them against Caledonia. Um, but now this opens up a whole new can of questions coming in this offseason for Belleville. And I think this is something that we really, really have to look at. And a lot of things, you know, obviously. Um, when you look at Belleville, I mean, you know, they got a lot of talent. I mean, like, the question's going to be is, you know, is um, it's going to depend what direction they go. I mean, if they go with the interim coach, naming the permanent coach, I don't really see any changes if that were the case because they would want to play for him. I mean, obviously. I mean, but I also noticed, you know, when you look at what happened on Twitter, um, Detroit Free Press sports writer, um, semi-retired Nick McCabe, um, wrote, a, wrote a tweet that I really didn't appreciate. And, you know, yeah, I mean, like, yeah, that's tap, tap, tap. Um, you know. But here's the thing. I mean, you know, I mean, Crowell, is a, he's a very honorable man. He really is. I mean, people are going to say, you know, people are going to say, okay, um, you know, he, I mean, like, it's hard for me to explain, but I'm just going to be as positive as I can about Jermaine Crowell. I mean, yes, I mean, like, has he done some bad things? Yes. But you got to look at, what he's done over at Belleville. I mean, led them to eight years into the playoffs. A state championship. I mean, you know, he's taken that program and turned them into a proven power. I mean, he really has. Um, And now you look at, obviously, with what's going to happen. Um, of course, there's going to be a coaching search. Um, I know that the assistant coach over there at Belleville is a candidate for the job. Um, and he should be a candidate. Um, I think he will be. I mean, like, um, but I mean, Belleville throughout the playoffs obviously had an interim coach and he ended up leading Belleville to the, um, to the success of the playoffs. He ended up leading him in the state title game. But a lot of that, you know, you got to get credit where credit's due. You know, they ended up, um, taking it. They, they did pretty well. 
I mean, they, they really did. Um, so the MHA has really been cracked. I mean, starting to really crack down on, you know, this undue influence and, you know, of, you know, bringing kids in from different school districts. Um, and this is where I think program strength has to be very important here because, you know, when you look at school districts in different areas, you know, you're, you gotta, I mean, if you're a coach and you're just envisioning, you know, you're saying, okay, um, you're going to have a kid that, you know, that you're going to have for a long time, you know, and then decides, and then the kid decides, okay, what if I go, you know, I go to a Catholic league school, you know, or maybe to a different district. Um, there are certain rules you have to do. You know what I mean? Basically, you know, when you look at the, um, there's a lot of, I mean, you got, if you're going to transfer out, you know, you got to do it for academic reasons. It can't be for athletic reasons. And what, this case meant was it looked like this was all athletic reasons. And, you know, it's kind of, you know, and then of course, you know, with everything that's went down, um, everything that's went down, um, you know, it's really difficult to, um, to describe. It really is. Um, you know, but I know there were a lot of suspicions around the Belleville program. The fact that they were on probation, um, and then they caught they were caught doing it again. I mean, you know, you look at what happened, um, you know, I mean, like it's it's happened. It can happen anywhere. I mean, it really can. Um, the undue influence rule. I mean, like, that's what happened with Belleville. Um gotta give Belleville's athletic department a lot of credit for complying the MHA in, in their investigation. Um, you know, and Belleville is now on probation. Now, when you look at the coaching vacancy over there, um, obviously the interim coach will be a candidate for sure. If he's the guy, obviously, um, it would stay status quo. But if it's somebody different, you know, you know that program's going to change. And you know that program, you know, if they one more strike against them and, you know, they might not qualify for the playoffs. I mean, like, you know, and the MHA does hold that discretion against teams. If, you know, against, if they don't comply with their rules, then, you know, then, you know, they can be held out of the playoffs. And, you know, that would be really unfortunate for Belleville, especially what they've done the last two years, um, winning two state titles. Um, obviously, I'm um, one in 2021 against Adams. Um, now I got to question that one. Um, I still do to this day question that um, the Adams game because of the, you know, because of the players there. I, I still question it. Um, but, you know, when you look at the season that they've had, um, undefeated, back-to-back -back years, um, had, had an undefeated season this year, 14-0. It's not easy to do. Um, what's next for the Tigers? What is next for them? That's the big question. Um Obviously, a new coach. You know, there's going to be coaching candidates there. Um, Belbo's a pretty good job. Um, nice, I mean, good area. Um, so I'm very curious to see what happens um, with that search. I'm going to, I'm not going to go more into depth about it because, you know, Belleville, of course, is in the Kensington Lakes Activity Association. Um, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But I know what Nick McCabe said on Twitter. I was really upset with this disappointed that he would use those words. Um, just actually stunned, to be honest with you. Um, and I understand the backlash he's getting. You know, it's kind of hard for journalists, you know, it's kind of hard for journalists and people in the media to, you know, give your opinions on people. I mean, it really is. I mean, you know, when you look at, you know, I mean, like, you can't use... You can't use personal vendettas against people. You can't do that in the media. You really can't. Um, you know, heck, I've had this problem myself. You know, when I, um, you know, when I look at, obviously, um, you know, I've had this problem myself. Um, you know, but, you know, but I've, um, I know I've started to, you know, I've learned from my mistakes, you know, and I hope that McCabe learns from his mistakes, you know, you know, that, um, you know, just don't attack a person's 
character. You know, that's how it is. You know what I mean? Just don't attack a person's character. Um, you know, I mean, like, but, you know, so, but it is what it is. So we'll see what happens. Um, we will see what happens there. Um, but, you know, but, um, but congratulations to Belleville on their second state championship this year. Um, you know, for football. So second straight year for them winning a state title. Um, let's go to Warren DSL. Um, they knocked off, um, Forest Hills Central, uh, of Forest Hills Northern, uh, pretty convincingly. Um, Brody Dodgeback, of course, he's been a, um, I remember what he did against Oak Park in 2020. Um, what he also did against um, Groves a couple weeks ago. Um, I mean, Brody Dodgeback, obviously, he's a Cincinnati commit. I will be very curious to see how he does um, here in the fact that Luke Fickle's now the head coach at Wisconsin. Um, obviously, um, you know, there's a lot of shock, I know, there that with Fickle leaving Cincinnati to go to Wisconsin, um, really surprising. Um, so I'm curious to see if he will change his recruitment or if he's going to stay with Cincinnati. Um, very curious there with that. Um, obviously they had no issue with Forest Hills, Forest Hills Central. Um, give credit where credit's due. I mean, coach Jeff Ron, what he's done over there. Um, and that whole pilot program, um, when, if you, if you count boys basketball as well, they've won three state titles and, um, you know, and two years in football and then last year in boys basketball. And they're one of the favorites again in the state, um, in the postseason. Um, they're one of the favorites in boys basketball this year. I mean, so it's like big credit where credit's due, um, to them. Um, of course, um, you know, Warren D. the Sal, they are in the Catholic league. Um, so we're not going to talk a lot <coughs> more about them, um, going forward. They're going to be very good again this year. Um, in boys basketball, um, that Catholic league is absolutely loaded. Um, obviously you got Warren D. LaSalle, you got Orchard Lake St. Mary's. Um, of course they got a really good, good crew over there. Um, I know they've been having some issues with, um, you know, with a couple of players. Um, I know a couple of their families are suing the, um, Catholic league and the, um, archdiocese of Detroit, um, just for them to play. Um, I guess it's a, um, it's a rule. Um, that is discriminatory. Now, I haven't looked at the lawsuit or anything like that, but I will be very curious to see how, um, that goes down. Really am. Um, I did post on my district's blog, obviously, about the two, um, impactful players, um, that are on there as well. They're on the district, um, preview for boys basketball. I did release that back in June. Um, so that is something to really, really look at. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, in that case, but also you got no by Detroit Catholic Central. Um, they got a, um, you know, I'm curious to see what Coach Brennan Swanee has coming back. Um, you know, and then you have UAD Jesuit, obviously, with Sonny Wilson. Um, we're going to talk UAD Jesuit when we talk Oak Park because I really think the Knights have a Cubs problem. Um, when it comes to playing UD Jesuit, um, but the Cubs are going to be very good again. I mean, I've seen them this summer. Um, they look really good. Um, I think they're going to be a scary team. I really do. Um, we're going to see what happens. Um, that's my take on football. Um, with the M two state champions, um, Warren D. LaSalle and, um, Belleville, um, in divisions one and two respectively. Um, so that's something to really look at. Of course, hanging in the next year, obviously, we talked the basketball football shortcomings last week on the podcast. Obviously, when you look at the favorites next year to watch for, um, obviously, you know, West Bloomfield, they got a lot coming back. Um, Barkston, they got some pieces coming back. Adams is a lot. Lake Orient's got a lot coming back. Oxford's got a lot coming back. Stony Creek's got a lot coming back. Um, um, I mean, like, um, Harper Woods, they got a lot coming back. Uh, Rochester loses a lot. Um, Ferndale, they lose a lot. Avenel's got a lot coming back. Um, you know, Troy, they don't have a lot coming back. Troy Athens does. Um, I mean, like, so really when you look at in football, I mean, like, obviously around the OA, um, 
you know, teams to really watch for next year, um, obviously, are West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, um, Clarkston, um, maybe Oxford, maybe Stony Creek, Harper Woods, definitely Groves for sure, um, Seaholm, um, Avondale, um, you know, and that, and those are the teams I'm really keep and those are the teams I'm really keeping a close eye on heading in next year for football. So, you know, so we'll see what happens um, going forward there. Um, let's go to girls basketball. As I mentioned last week, we did the preview, obviously, with girls basketball. Um, you know, as we as we mentioned, opening night, obviously, for most of the league, it's Tuesday night. Um, when you look at the girls, and I think this is going to be really interesting to see. I talked about last week how West Bloomfield, are they primed to repeat? I mean, that is the big question. I mean, going around, I know there's been a lot of basketball recruiting pages that are saying, well, West Bloomfield's going to be really good. They're going to be scary. They're going to be, you know, they got a special team. Yes, they do. I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not bashing West Bloomfield or anybody, but when you look at teams that on paper, Yes, West Bloom is going to be a tough team. I mean, they're going to be good. I mean, there's no doubt about it. They got a favorable district. You know, I think it's a tougher district than people think. Um, but when I look at West Bloomfield, um, they're loaded. I mean, obviously, we have both Davis sisters, both Hendrick sisters. Um, you know, but I'm curious who that fifth starter is going to be. I mean, that's really where I think could give West Bloomfield problems. The other problem I can see for Coach Jeremy McAllister is the bench. Who's going to be on that bench, you know, that can really spell some players who got, get some foul trouble? I mean, what if Bolt Davis is getting into foul trouble? What if Bolt Hendricks is getting into foul trouble? I mean, you know, that's really where I think could be West Bloom is undoing. And if, if you have a very tight officiating crew and you get Bolt Davis sisters in foul trouble, Bolt Hendricks sisters in foul trouble, you know, then where do you go if you're Coach Jeremy McAllister? Where do you go? That's the big question. I mean... That's why I'm saying for West Bluefield, the biggest concern I have with the Lakers is the bench. I mean, that is the, the bench is a real, real concern, what I'm seeing. And it is a serious, serious concern. Um, so, if you're, so if you're West Bluefield, you know, be, I would say be very careful. I mean, you know, be very careful. I mean, that's how I am with West Bluefield is, They've got to be absolutely careful because if they don't, they're going to be in some trouble. And that's why I mentioned the preview and the preview. You know what I mean? They got to be careful because if they get a tight officiating crew, they're in trouble. I mean, that's how it is. You know, they got to learn how to play through that. You know, if they get really tough fouls against them or, you know what I mean? They got to learn how to play against that. So other teams I keep an eye on this year is Lake Orion. Um, obviously when you look at the Dragons, I am really shocked that this team is not being talked about around the state. Um, and the reason why I say this is because Lake Orient's got playmakers. They got proven players. Um, uh, Maddie Everett, Chloe Wiegers, Taylor Dinda, Jody McCaffrey, Audrey Wishmeyer, Ray Sullivan, um, you know, Kylie Heck. I mean, when you look at this team, I, there's a reason why I call Lake Orion probably the deepest team in Oakland County. Because they can go at least 10, 11 deep. That's how much Coach Bob Bridges has. That is scary good. And that's not mentioning Charlotte Poblowski and uh, Izzy Wolchinski. That's not mentioning those two. Um, when you look at the Dragons, um, obviously a lot of proven experience. That helps. You got program strengths. You got, I mean, like, you know, this team can win games in different ways. I mean, that's really when you look at with Lake Orion. They can win in different ways. And that's that's a that's a recipe for success. Always has been. Um when I look at the Dragons, um, they're a team that could surprise some people. Yes, the size is a weakness, but they got a lot they got enough speed, you know what I mean, to overcome that, um, overcome size. Other concern I have is outside shooting. Um, if Lake Orion can find some outside shoot, I mean, can find the outside shooting touch, like in the postseason, I think this could be a scary basketball team. I really do. I mean, they got everything. They got the intangibles down. They got the interior play. They got the guard play. 
They got the defense mindset. Um, they're well coached, obviously. I mean, this team's going to be scary. They really are. I mean, that game against Oxford opening night, um, that's going to be really interesting. Then you look at Oxford. Uh, obviously, when you look at the Wildcats, people have said, people are, I know I've been getting criticized a little bit about this, why I call Oxford probably they have the best starting five in the league. And I think it, it is. I mean, when you look at players like Sophia Robb, you look at Allison Hofstetter, um, Miranda Wanemko, Peyton Richter coming back from injury. Um, and then you look at, um, of course, Nabea Wood. I mean, you look at that lineup, you know, that's a, that's a tough lineup to go against. It really is. Um, obviously, you know, with the healthy, a healthy Peyton Richter coming back from an ACL injury, that puts them in a really nice spot. The bench is a little bit of a concern for Coach Rachel Breyer, but, you know, when you had that starting five, you know what I mean? That could, that, it could be a good thing for you. You know what I mean? Maybe, you know, use the league, maybe the white, maybe a test to experiment your bench because your district is really brutal. I mean, their district is absolutely insane. I mean, you're dealing with Grand Blank. You got Davison in there. Um, Lapierre's improved. Um, so that's going to be a tough district. But when I look at Oxford, there's a reason why I think they're the favorite in white because that's starting five. I mean, when you look at the rest of that division, obviously you got North Farmington. Um, it's hard for me to trust North Farmington. Um, yes, they've played some good teams. Yes, they got their two top scorers back and sell left when Penelope Query. But there, I got some concerns. Who's their third and fourth option? That's the big question I have with North Farmington. It really is. Um, and then you look at um, Berkeley. I'm really high on this team. I'm really high on the Bears. Um, yes, they lost Ashley Loon. I mean, that is a big loss. I mean, that's going to be a big loss for Coach Cody Feltner. But you do return Jillian Gomes. You have um, you have Ava Beard. You have um, Avery Wintergarden, Malvin Nolan. I know they're really high on a um, on a young athlete. I know they're really high on her. Um, but Berkeley could be a team that could surprise some people this year. I mean, if they can find that same magic that they did last year in the district, um, I think they can give Detroit Renaissance a lot of problems again. Um, yes, Detroit runs on a much different team, but they could give them problems. I mean, that'll be something to really watch for. It'll be really interesting. But Berkeley's a team I'm really high on. I really am. Um, is Royal Oak back? That's the big question I have with Coach Brian Sapata's team. Um, and then Seaholm, obviously, they got a lot coming back. That says a lot. Um, of course, with Shea Manchester back, that's a big deal. I'm curious to see that game with Blue Beale Hills, though. That'll be really interesting. Because I think Blue Beale Hills is a favorite in the blue. Um, the reason why I say this is because, you know, they got the playmakers. Ruby Smith back. That's a big deal. Um, Kristen Massey. Coach Kristen Massey's done a really nice job. Um, basically rebuilding the program from scratch. Um, just, you know, with this division, obviously when you look at the challengers in the blue, Farmington stands out. Um, obviously, um, you know, obviously, um, Ferndale, you could stand out as a wild card. Avondale, maybe. Pontiac, maybe. Um, but we'll see. I mean, we will see. I mean, but Bloopy Hills, I think clearly in this division, I really think that the Blackhawks could do some damage in this in the in this division. I mean, I mean, they were really close with North Farmington. They were really close with them. Pontiac is really taking the next step. I'm really curious to see what Coach um. Rowan Marshall does with this team. One thing I know for Pontiac, they've got to build program strength back. I mean, they got to get the numbers up somehow. If they can put together a junior varsity team, if they can put together a freshman team, um, that is another good step to get to getting the program back in the thick of it. Um, so that's something to really watch for there. Ferndale is in the same situation um, with Keith Paris um, taking over that program. Um, so I'm curious to see what happens with the Eagles, with the Phoenix. Oak Park, they just got to get scoring. I mean, that's the bottom line when I look at the Knights. They just got to get some scoring. If they can get some scoring, um, you know, then they can turn the season around real quick. They really can. Um, but we'll see what happens. But right now when I look at the blue, it's clearly favored Bloompia Hills. I mean, Bloompia Hills, to me, they have a very good team. 
Um, I think they're better than people think. They're well more advanced than they were last year. They were they are well more advanced than they were last year. They got three programs. Program strength looks to be coming back. Um, looks like good things are on the verge over there. Plumpia Hills it really is. Um, really is. Um, let's go back to the red a little bit because we were talk Clarkston. I talked Lake Orion. I mean, like I did talk Oxford a little bit in the white. Um, I want to go. I want to go to Rochester because this is a very interesting team this year. Um, when you look at Coach Bill Durson's team, obviously you they they don't lose much. They didn't lose much. I mean, obviously when you look at the Twin Towers, um, with um, Alice Mack and Kylie Robinson, that is a big deal right there. Um. And when you look at Rochester, I think the big addition for them is bringing in a um, bringing in Samantha Glover. She is a girls soccer commit from I going to Iowa next year. Um, basically replacing Abby Bryshu, who is graduated. Um, I think that you know when you look at at um what Glover is going to do, I, she brings um, she's very athletic. Um. She brings some speed. Obviously, that's going to help him. Very athletic as well. Um, you know, obviously, the big question I have with Rochester is going to be their point guard play. That's the big question I have with Coach Bill Thurston's team. Um, when you look at, when you look at, obviously, you have the two twin towers, the shooters, the proven shooters. You got Stevie Norgrove. We got Abby Pleasant. Um, you know, I mean, those are, I mean, you got Ava Williams as well. Um, I think Rochester could be in line for a very good year. The problem I have with Rochester, and this is this is not a this November to February problem. It's March. I mean, when you look at Rochester in the postseason, um, they have made the district finals four straight years. They haven't gotten out of the district final. I mean, I remember they lost to Utica twice. Um, they lost to Lake Orion last year. I mean, for Rochester, you have the district on your home floor. It's virtually the same teams in there, except Lake Orion's in a different district. This is where I would judge Rochester. It's not the regular season. I would judge Rochester. It's the postseason. I mean, if you're Coach Bill Thurston, you know, you know, that's going to be where you're going to get judged. It's going to be the postseason. I mean, your team's going to get judged there. It won't be in the regular season. It'll be in the postseason. Stony Creek's an interesting one. I mean, there is a reason why I call Stony Creek um, Team Feinbaum. There really is. Because, you know, you look at proven players like um, like Aaron Flynn. You look at players like Mia Carson. You look at, um, you know, Sarah LaPrairie. Um, I think the question is going to be the interior. Merrick Swalback coming back. That'll be that'll be a big help there for Stone, for Coach Kellen James. Um, Kelly Butcher's one of them. I'm, Kaylee Butcher's one. I'm I'm watching carefully. Um, you and Lily Solak as well. I mean, like obviously Stony Creek's got some players. I mean, they got some playmakers. Um, and they have one of the best assistant coaches in the game, and um, and um, Chris Flynn, one of the best best coaching minds in the game of basketball. What I like about Stony Creek is, you know, they're going to be solid. They're going to be good. I mean, they're going to be very good. Clarkston's going to be interesting. I mean, when you look at the Wolves this year, um, I mentioned about, you know, Clarkston, you know, not having that true star player. Um, I mean, yes, you lose a great player, Manny Swarovski. You lose Izzy Haley. That's a big deal. Um, but you got um, But you got um, some key players that, to watch for. I mean, Mia, Zor- Mia Zorski's one. Abraham Hernandez is one. You got, um, you got, um, Claire Walker. You got, El- you got, um, Elia Morger. You got Anna Thomas there. Um, this is going to be a good team. I, I think Clarkson's going to be a team that <laughs> could surprise some people this year. Who knows? I mean, Aaron Goodnow's done a really nice job with the program ever since taking over for Coach John Wire. Um, he's done a really good job with that program. So that's something to really watch for. I mean, you know, when you look at Clarkston. Um, Groves. Um, when you look at Groves, obviously, you know, you got to look at last season, of course, they had some struggles early, adjusting the transition. Um, but when you look at Groves, they only lost one senior, 
majority of their team's back. I mean, could they surprise some people? Maybe. But when you look at the division, how it's changed, obviously you got Lake Orion and Rochester in there. Um, both those teams, you know, they got a lot of experience, a lot of proven depth as well. So that's something to really watch for. Um, obviously, Caitlin Sanders, Sierra Racco are going to be two players to watch. Lily Gallagher's one I'm watching carefully. Um, you know, they got others as well um, to really watch for as well. But Coach Allison Heidi, she's done a really nice job with that program. Yes, the record says 10 and 11 and 4 and 8 in the red from a year ago, but there is some promise over there with Groves. There really is. Um, so that's something to really watch for there. Um, Troy Colts. Um, they lost a lot of talent from a year ago. Um, so there's going to be a lot of talent to replace over there with Troy. Um, I know they're high on Lizzie Budnack and Avery Allen. Regan Zider is a player to watch. Um, for them, I mean, Macy Zider could be a player to watch along with Carly Higginbottom. Not sure if they're playing varsity right now, but they could make some noise this year wherever program, whatever, um, wherever they're at. I mean, I think they'll make some noise this year. And there's Southfield, Arts and Tech. Obviously, when you talk the Warriors, you talk about the great days of Coach Michelle Marshall. Um, I call her the Co Coach Michelle Jackson. Um, but when you look at a and obviously, you know, they ha they were very young last year. I mean, they ended up, I mean, it was a very unusual year for them. I mean, 5 and 16, that, that's not, that's rough. Um, obviously, players like Kamara Page, you got um, Christian Banks, Jalen Austin. Of course, I remember Jalen Austin from the um, state championship game um, playing at Southfield. I think he was a freshman. Um I mean, like, it's going to be really interesting to see what a and does um, this year. I mean, like, I mean, a for a and as I mentioned in the blog, um, they look good when against bad teams, but then we get, they, they look real bad against bad teams. I mean, that's really where the issues lie with a and I mean, if they, they got to figure it out, you know, against good teams. I mean, they can figure it out. Who knows what happens? Who knows what will happen with them? So... We'll see what happens with a and I mean, a lot to talk about with them um, as we head into the later months um, of the season. So, we'll see what happens there. All right, now we're going to talk from girls. We're going to preview the boys. Um, when you look at the boys, um, we talked to girls a lot last week, um, breaking them down. Um, the boys is going to be very interesting because, you know, when you look at the boys this year, I mean, Obviously, you got some teams that are cap more than capable of going to the um, state finals in Divisions 1 and 2. I mean, Ferndale's been in the Division 2 state semifinals the last two years. But they ran into Grand Rapids Catholic Central, and, you know, they've had some really tough matchups. Ferndale, I'm really curious with this year because they don't have their two top players who graduated, Travion Lewis and Jason Drake. So who I think could step up, they got some proven playmakers that can step up. And they also did get a transfer in there from Warren Mott. So, for Coach Juan Rickman, you're playing this type of schedule, you know, and then you have the red schedule, and then you have a very difficult district in a district, you know, that still is looking for a host, which I'm really shocked that I think if you're Ferndale, why not host the thing? You have the, you have, you have the facilities to host it, so that's my take for Ferndale is for the district. Why don't you ask the MHA, you know what, let's host the district. You know, we can host it, you know. I mean, give us a home court advantage. I think that would be really cool. You know, you got some really good teams there that you're playing against. You know, you got Detroit, you got um, Ferndale University, who I think is going to be much better this year. Um, I think they're going to be very good this year. I think I really like what Coach John, Josh Nix has done over at Ferndale University. Um. But back to Ferndale, um, you got Detroit Lincoln King Academy. That's going to be a tough matchup for you. Um, and then you know it's it's a, it's a tough district, but it's a it's a favorable district for you. So I will be very curious to see how this district goes when that happens. But the Ferndale is a team they got the majority of their teams back, um, except for Lewis and Drake. Um, I'm really high on Chris Williams. I think he's going to have a big year. 
Cade Defoe, I think he's going to have a really good year for Ferndale. Um, I think Coach Ron Rickman's got the team, you know, but they they're gonna they're gonna have, they're still gonna be looking for something to prove. Obviously, now people have talked to me about North Farmington, and the reason why people have told me about North Farmington is that the, could they have a chance to get to this to get the title game? I think they got a shot. I mean, look at who they got back. I mean, Ryan Hurst is back. You got Prince Jackson um, coming up from eligibility. I mean, like now eligible to play. Um, you got Tyler Spratt. You got. I mean, there's a lot of proven players on North Farmington that could do really well this year for the Raiders for Coach Tynick Ocean. I mean, I think they got a shot. They got a favorable district. Um, they got the experience. I think they got a good chance to win the Red this year. Um, we'll see. I mean, we will see um, with them. We will see with North Farmington. I mean, like, I will be very curious to see what happens to them this year. Um, then there's Oak Park. Now, I talked about the UAD issue, and it is clear the last two years that Oak Park has not been able to get by the Cubs. Actually, it's three years. I still remember the double overtime game in Detroit where <laughs> Sonny Wilson hits a four-point play, sends it in the double, over sends the double overtime. I still can't believe that. <laughs> I mean, like, I remember that play real well. And then last year when they took on Royal Oak, I mean, when they when that Royal Oak, um, you know, against UAD Jesuit, I mean, Sonny Wilson had a nice game against Oak Park. <laughs> so if I'm Coach Duran Shepard, yes, you got the talent, but here's one thing that I would ask you to do, you know, and I don't know if, if, if both teams have an opening here, but here's my suggestion to Coach Shepard. Play him. Play UAD Jesuit. Play him in the regular season. It'll give you an idea what they have. I mean, you know what they got. See where you're at as a team. Just see where you're at. You know, that's what I would tell Durant, Coach Durant Shepard. I mean, I know you got games to fill. I know that. So that's my suggestion. Play UAD Jesuit. I would call them almost every every week, every day, like say, like, want to play us? Want to play us? Want to play us? You know what I mean? I would do that. And make UAD Jesuit say, okay, we'll play you guys. That's what I would do if I'm Coach Durant Shepard. I mean, it is clear to me that you've done very well against everybody in the red. You've done very well. But the team that's given you the most fits has been UD Jesuit. <laughs> that really is what it is. So, but Oak Park, they got a really good team this year. They got a good team. But the thing that's really been the big bugaboo for them is UD Jesuit. Um, and then there's Clarkston. Um, when you look at the Wolves this year, I mean, yes, they lose, they lost a lot last year, but this is still Clarkston. I mean, they still got Cameron on and you got Desmond Steffens coming back from injury. Um, you have Cole Church back. You have, um, you have, um, you have Brandon Wiley coming back who had a really nice, nice, um, nice, um, nice stretch when, um, Keegan Wasilic went out. Um, and then you have, um, I mean, with Clarkston, with them, I mean, they're going to be solid. I mean, they, that's not saying you got Brady Cozen and, um, and you got Brody Cozen and um, Luke Scherler. I mean, the two interior guys are very good. Um, I think with Clarkston, the concern I have with them is their guard play. Yes, John calls back, but he's not a true point guard. Um, but when I look at the Wolves, um, they could have a nice year. They could have a nice year. I mean, Coach Tim Wasilic had a, has done a nice job of that program. It was very unusual for them to have 10 losses last year. really was. Um, that's really on Clarkston, like, for them to have 10 losses. Um, but the bottom line is, you know, for the Wolves is, you know, you got to make sure, you know, you're, you you got to make sure, I mean, you're Clarkston. Clarkston's always going to be Clarkston. I mean, that's really what it is. Tough, defensive, gritty, you know, that's what's got to be. It's not like the star-studded year when they had um all that mega talent that they had over there. My question for Clarkson's going to be is they have a ton of depth. Use it. Use it. You know, that's what I would say to Coach Tim Wasilla. Use your depth. You know, 
that's what I would say to him. You got you have plenty of depth, plenty of playmakers. Use it. Um, and then there's Rochester Adams. Um, obviously when you look at the Highlanders, um, they lost a lot of talent last year. I mean, I think when you look at players like um Brady Prescore and you got um, I'm curious to see what Adams has this year. Obviously, with, with the talent they have, um, they program strength is really good over there at Adams. Um, so really curious to see what happens over there. Um, I think they're going to have a, they're going to have a nice year. I saw them this summer. They look good. Um, we're going to see what happens, um, going forward there. Um, my picks for the red this year, my projections, um, they're going to be awesome on the blog coming up this week. Um, I got, um, I got North Farmington's a favorite followed by Ferndale, then, um, Oak Park, Clarkston, then Adams. That is the order of projected results right now in the red division. Okay, now let's go from the red to the white. Um, obviously, when you look at this division, 16 division, Farmington and West Bloomfield both drop down. Um, when you look at Farmington, um, they don't, they got a lot coming back. They're supposed, they're supposed to be to be better for Coach Jerry McConnell. Um, very curious to see what the Falcons have. Um, they got a lot of talent back. That's a big deal. Um, especially for Coach McDowell heading into his second year coaching this program. Um, it'll be very interesting to see what the Raiders have. I'm not what the Falcons have this year. Very curious to see what happens with them. Um, we're gonna see what happens. Um, I think Troy's gonna be very good this year, obviously, with what they got coming back. Zach Pinoza, you got Darius Whiteside, John Whiteside, Zach Pinoza, Mason Parker. Um, you got um, you got um, and then they got um, got to figure out one of their big guys there. But um, Coach Gary Frelick's got a really good team over there. Um, I know Mason Parker's really improved. I know Zach Pinoza's really improved. Um, Troy reminds me a little bit of UMKC. Um, you know, back from the old days of the Summit League. Um, you know, proven. I mean, they don't really have that um, that true true point guard, but um, they have like a bunch of scoring guards. I mean, obviously Parker's a scoring guard. Pinoz is a scoring guard. Um, Whiteside's a very athletic forward. John Whiteside can go and shoot you three if need be. They got good good size inside. Um, I mean, there's really no weaknesses when you look at Troy. I mean, program strength's always been solid with Coach Gary Frelick and his team. Um, but I think Troy could be a team that's really, really going to be good this year. Um, then there's Bloomby Hills. Um, when you look at the Blackhawks, um, no, new coach. And um, Coach Canfield taking over. Um, I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with Bloomfield Hills. I mean, obviously, you have no Adam Chich there. Um, you have CJ Jackson there. Um, size interior play is a question mark for Bloomfield Hills. I know they're going to rely a lot on Adam Chich to carry him in games. Um, obviously, losing the lead. I mean, Brandon Wellen will be a huge force in the interior. He should be. Um, so there's a lot to look at with Bloomfield Hills. Um, this season, obviously, with the Blackhawks, but they're going to rely a lot on Adam Chich to carry him in games. Um, that's something to really, really watch for going forward with them. Um, then there's West Bloomfield for Coach um, Coach Arnett Jordan. Um, when you look at the Lakers, um, they're going to be better. I, I think West Bloomfield's going to be better. Um, I've seen how this team plays. They, I, I'm really high on Mitchell. See if he can have a bounce back year. Um, I think there's several candidates that can have a bounce back year for West Bloomfield. They had a really rough time in the red. Um, but I think the Lakers could surprise some people this year. I'm, you know, they could make some noise. Who knows? I mean, like, you know, they, um, fought tough with Bloomfield Hills, um, early in the year, uh, last year, um, uh, had that tough loss to them. Um, but I'm very curious to see what West Bloomfield, how are they going to do this year? Really curious to see what happens to them. Then there's Groves. I mean, obviously, new coach and Mark West taking over the program. Um, I will be very – I mean, Elijah Yeller's the best player, but they got a lot of several young guys over there for Groves. But I really think the Falcons could surprise some people this year. Who knows? I mean, program strength, not necessarily the greatest. But Groves, they could surprise some people. And then there's Lake Orion. I mean, when you look at the Dragons, obviously, you got to look at Nate Havrella, um, Blake Liddell, and um, DJ Morrow. Basically gonna be at the heart and soul of that of that other of the dragons this year, obviously. But you got some proven players as well. I mean, 
I mean, like Caden DeGreff from the obviously what he's done in football. Um, he's a name to watch, player to watch. Ryan Rushfield's another one. Um, only a freshman. I think he's he could be in line for a nice year if things go right. Um, for Coach Jose Andradis. Um, but everything with the Dragons is gonna throw through four guys. Um, Havrella, Kevin Toby, Blake Liddell, and DJ Moore. Those are gonna be your key players for Lake Corian this year. If the Dragons are going to want to go places, you know, they're going to rely a lot on those four players. Um, be very curious to see who steps up. But Lake Orion, they could surprise some people. I mean, like, I'm very curious to see where they're at this year. I mean, they could surprise some people. I mean, we'll see. Um, my order projection in the white, um, I got is Troy, Bloomfield Hills, West Bloomfield, Lake Orion, Farmington, and Groves. That is the order of um that is the order of um projection for the white division this year. Let's go now from the white to the blue. This is the seventeen division. Stony Creek, they had a new coach, um, and um Jeff Owen taking over. Um you got Peyton Rummler and um Trey Walker. Jonah McKay is another one I'm high on for Stony Creek. I mean, when I look at the Cougars, they got a lot coming back. I mean, they got a lot coming back. This could be a very scary team this year. I really think Stony Creek could be a team that I don't think anybody wants to see come postseason time. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I think Stony Creek's a team to beat in that division right now. Rochester, obviously, when you look at, obviously, with the, what Elijah, Elijah Kalash has done um, this, this summer, um, to put him together with the football guys, um, obviously, Alex Bueno, you got um, Kamani Potts, you got um, Grant Cogano, um, Jaden Bolden. I mean, Rochester could surprise some people this year. I'm a little worried about their depths. Um, that's something to really watch for. I'm a little concerned about their depths. Um, but I'm curious to see what they have this year. I mean, Rochester could be a team that could surprise some folks heading into the year. Berkeley, you know, when you look at them with Coach um, Joe Sermo, it starts and ends with Tamir Markunovic. Um, If he plays well, Berkeley plays well. He doesn't play well, they're in trouble. Secondary scoring is a concern for me when I look at the Bears this year. I mean, this could be a team that, you know, it depends if you're hot or cold when you describe Sony Creek. Or when you describe Berkeley. I mean, we'll see what happens. Um, Oxford. Um, obviously, Jake Champagne, what he's done um, this summer. Um, you, have Brandon, you have Dominic Cassisi there. You have, um, you have the Katie boys there playing as well. Um, you got them. Um, Bo Tate there as well. I mean, Oxford, they're going to be okay. I mean, size is a big concern for Oxford this year. Um, we'll see what happens with them. I mean, like, they could be another team. That could be another sleeper team to watch. I mean, you know, when you look at Oxford, I mean, they're another sleeper team to watch. Seaholm, always scrappy. That's how you describe Seaholm. Very good team coming back, obviously. Their, their junior class was very good a year. I mean, very good. Um, I expect they're going to be scrappy again. They're going to be solid. Um, they're going to play their brand of basketball. So I'm very curious to see what Seaholm has. Um, but I expect them to be in the mix this year, um, coming in the season. And then there is, um, Troy Athens. Um, the Red Ox. Um, curious to see what, um, not a lot of people are talking about Troy Athens this year. I don't know why. Um, this is a team that, you know, had some up and downs a year ago. They had some struggles. Um, but I think Athens could surprise some people. I mean, I really think that, you know, you look at players like, um, and they got some proven players on there too. I mean, I still remember what they got. I mean, like Troy Athens, they're going to be a team to really watch for this year. I mean, like they could surprise some people in the blue. Who knows? I mean, I will be very curious to see what Coach Dave Scott has. Um, so, but. I mean, it depends what Troy Athens. Either they, they can go up or they, they got they got the player makers to do it. Program strength is a bit of a concern. So that's something to really watch for Troy Athens. And then there's Royal Oak. Um the Ravens. When you look at the Ravens, um, moving up from the gold division, winning that division last year, knocking off Harper Woods, beating him twice. I mean, like beating him twice, that was a big deal there. Um, the Ravens rely on three guys. Clark Camden, Davis Arbiter. And I'm Dylan Baldwin. I mean, those are the three guys that they rely on. And I think when you look at Royal Oak, I mean, I think they could, they're going to be good. I really, I really like what Coach Aaron Smith has done. He's turned that program around. 
Um, he's built that. I mean, like, you know, last season, of course, was a huge turnaround for them after I think six losing seasons over there, and they turned it around there. I mean, bottom line is Royal Oak. They could surprise some people. I mean, if they prove that they belong in this division, now it's the time to prove it. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, projected order of finish in the blue. I got Stony Creek, Rochester, um, Berkeley, Oxford. And I'll take it back. I got Stony Creek, Rochester, Seaholm, Berkeley, Oxford, um, Troy, Athens, Royal Oak. That's my projections in the blue this year. And then last but not least, we got the gold division. Um, obviously, when you look at this division, obviously... Terrence Porter back coaching, now coaching at Southfield Arson Tech. Southfield, of course, in this division, um, you know, after being in the white last year, it was a really difficult year for them in that division. Um, I will be actually in the blue last year, really difficult year for them. Um, they should be the favorite this year. I mean, Southfield should be the favorite in this division with the experience that got coming back. Um, I'm very curious to see what the Warriors have. How they're gonna adjust the Porter system? Um, Porter's more of an open type system. I think that'll be really interesting to see. Um, I think a I think a and T they got a good chance to be very good this year with what they got. Um, I think a team that challenges them is Harper Woods. Um, to Juan Porter, um, obviously making the move up from Division Two to Division One. Um, also, they're in a tougher district, obviously. Um, they got some proven playmakers as well coming back. Um, Harper Woods could be a team to really watch for this year. Um, you know, that they, they could surprise some people. Who knows? I mean, like, I'm curious to see what where the direction the Pioneers go this season. That is something to really watch for. Um, Ferndale University. Um, obviously, I talked about the Eagles earlier, a little bit about them at Ferndale, obviously. But Ferndale University, I think they're going to be very good. I mean, like, I really am high on the Eagles, what Coach Josh Nix has done with that program. Obviously, you have proven players, and, um, you know, you got um, Chris Hendricks coming back, Kendricks coming back. You have um, you have Samaj McGee. You have, they got a lot of proven playmakers on that team. I mean, Ferndale University, I think they could surprise some people. I think they're going to do some damage. I think they're going to play, they're going to play good basketball. I really am. Curious to see what the Eagles have. I mean, program strength starting to get better. If they can get a freshman program in there, um, create three programs, that'll not only help the program out in the in the in the future, but also deep deep into the future. Because I think for Ferndale University, if you get three programs there, it'll help you out big time. And I think they have they're more than capable of getting that, despite them being a small school. But I think they have enough kids in that building that can that can that for them to get a to get three. Three teams will be a big deal, huge get for Coach Josh Nix if he, if that happens. Um, but I'm really high on the Eagles. Then there's Avondale. I mean, Avondale, when I look at the Yellow Jackets this year, um, I think they're going to be good. Um, Josh Sykes back. Um, they got some proven players back. Coach Pat Clancy has got has done a wonderful job with that team, um, with that program, building the program strength back up. Um, really curious to see what Avondale has this year. Um, I think Avondale could surprise some people this year. I really think that if the Yellow Jackets can, um, if the Yellow Jackets, you know, can keep consistent and then keep rising from that, you know, and taking the next step, I think they could surprise some people come district time. I mean, yes, they're in a tough district. You got Clarkson in there. You got Waterford Mott's in there. Um, but I'm very curious to see what happens there with that team. I think Avondale's a sleeper in that in that district. Um, they are also a sleeper in the gold this year. So it's something to really watch for when you look at Avondale. And then there's Pontiac. Um, when you look at the Phoenix, um, Pontiac's a team that I think could be a team that really um, last year was very unusual for them winning only two games. I mean, that was not like Pontiac to only win two games. I mean, that tells me something right there. There's some serious concerns with Pontiac. Um, I think the Phoenix could be a, a team that, you know, who knows with them. I mean, like, I think the Phoenix, if the Phoenix can at least get back in the thick of it, get back on the right track, um, Davion Hall has to play well. 
They need others to step up. Coach Damon O'Neill, if they can get that, I think Pontiac could be back in the thick of it. But we will see. Uh, my projected order of finish in the um, gold division this year, I got Southfield. I got Harper Woods. Then um, Avondale, Fernell University, and then Pontiac. Um, my projected order of finish in the um, gold division this year. My top 10 teams to start the year. Um, number one I got is the, um, is the North Farmington Raiders. Um, they're loaded. They got a lot of experience. Um, you know, obviously that says a lot there. They're, they look ready to make a run in division one. I think the Raiders, you know, with what they got coming back, um, I think they're primed and ready to make a deep run. Um, number two, I got the Ferndale Eagles. Um, let's just say with North Farmington, Ferndale, um, proven players back. Curious to see how they, how they replace, um, Travion Lewis and Jason Drake. Um, you know, very curious to see what happens there with them. Number three I got is the, um, number three I got the Oak Park Knights. Um, they're loaded. A lot of proven experience. Um, I think they could surprise some people this year. I'm really, I'm really high on them, but they just got to overcome that UD problem. If they can, if they can do that, I think they're going to do very, very well this year. Um, number four, I got the Clarkson Wolves. Um, Clarkson, I think could be a team that, they could be really interesting. I mean, because I think the Wolves could, um, you know, you got, you got John Call, you got um, Desmond Steffens, you got Kevin Dighton, you have Luke Schurler, um, Blake Cozen, um, uh, Brody Cozen. I mean, like, you know, they got a lot of boom players. I mean, like, but I'm curious to see what happens with them this year. They should have a bounce back year for them. Um, number five I got is the um, Adams Highlanders. Um, I think Adams. Yes, Brady Prescore is a big, um, big reason why I had them here at five. Um, I think that, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. They've had a good summer. They've really impressed me. Um, I'm really high on this Adams team. Number six, I got the Troy Colts. Um, I think Troy, obviously, they're loaded. They got a lot of experience back. Um, that says a lot to describe them. Um, we'll see what happens with Troy. I mean, but I'm really, really high on Troy this year um, to do well in the white. I'm um, really curious to see how they do this year in this division. Number seven, I got Bloomby Hills. Um, the Blackhawks, yes, they're going to rely a lot on Noah Adam Chich. Um, They got some other players as well. Uh, I'm very curious to see what happens with them going forward. Um, I think they're going to do pretty, pretty well in this in this um, division um, pretty well this year. I really think Bloomby Hills is a team to really watch for. Number eight, the Stony Creek Cougars. Um, Peyton Rumber, Trey Walker. Um, Coach Jeff Owen, what he's done at Warren Mott. Really curious to see what happens with them. Um, I think they're going to do pretty well this year. Um, I, I'm high on them, but we'll see. We will see. Um, number nine, I got Lake Orion. And the reason why the Dragons here, obviously you got Nate Heverella, you got DJ Morrow, you got, um, you got, um, Kevin Toby, you got, um, Blake Liddell. Um, curious to see. Where the Dragons find their interior scoring, um, besides Liddell, um, could it be Caden DeGreffinley? Could it be Ryan Wushel? I mean, like Lake Orient, they could surprise some people this year. Um, we will see with the Dragons. I mean, I'm very curious to see what happens with them going forward. I think Coach Jose Andrade has got a good team coming back. Um, we will see what happens with them. And then number ten I got is Rochester. Um, I think the Falcons they could do pretty well this year. I mean. Obviously, who they got coming back, um, you know, you got um, Jaden Bolden, you got um, you got um, Grant Cogano, you got um, Alex Bueno, Daniel Blachkalaj, who's had a really good camp. Um, Rochester's a team that I think they could surprise some people this year. Um, I like what Coach Nicobola's done with that team, um, but there's a lot of expectation now at Rochester. Um, people are going to say, well, should this team be in the white? You know, maybe, you know what I mean? But that's not how the division works. And, you know, when you look at the division this year, you know, it's kind of a really odd setup. But I think Rochester could be in line to do some really good things coming into the year. So other teams to watch in the um, boys' side of things. You got Oxford, obviously, is a team I'm watching. Berkeley's another one. Um, South Darson Tech, Harper Woods, um, definitely are teams to watch. West Bloomfield, forgot to mention West Bloomfield in my pool. Um... Actually, I take that back. West Bloomfield, I have them at 
number at number nine and Lake Orion at number ten. So I forgot to mention that. So apologies to Rochester. Um, I got West Bloomfield at nine, Lake Orion at ten. Um, the Lakers they got a lot coming back, obviously. So that's something to really watch for. Um, really high in the Lakers this year. So we'll see what happens going forward. All right, now my final thoughts this week. I want to wish everybody best of luck this week in basketball. Um, and every other winter sport this this week. Um, so we'll see what happens going forward. All right, I'm going to sign off here. Make sure you follow the blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information on basketball stuff. Um, okay, I'm going to sign off here. Um, take care. God bless, and I'll see you all next week. Everybody. See you next week. Thank you. God bless.